Hey everyone, and welcome to the seventh episode of my Pokemath series, where I'll be making short videos on some of the maths behind Pokemon game mechanics. In this episode, we'll be dealing with battle experience in generations 1, 2, and 3. As a new Pokemon fan playing Pokemon Red 24 years ago, oh my god. My knowledge of battle experience was limited, but I knew enough to get by. Defeating a Pokemon gives you some experience, after a certain amount of experience you level up. For generations 1 and 2, the formula for battle experience is this. And for generation 3, it's this. The generation 3 formula is the same for generation 4, but as I've only played the first 3 so far, that's what I'll be sticking with for now. Now at this point you may be saying, but these equations are the same. Maths teaches us that A times B times C is the same as C times B times A, or A times C times B. So why have I made this distinction? And on top of that, Bulbapedia says the Generation 3 formula is used for 1 and 2 as well. Well, I'm afraid Bulbapedia is wrong, and whilst the mathematicians are correct that order of elements in a multiplication doesn't matter, Pokemon mathematicians would disagree. As we're constantly removing decimal places after each part of an equation, the order does in fact matter. Skipping ahead to a later bit of the video, using the Gen 3 equation for Gen 1 is giving me 339 experience for my XP All Charmander, when in reality it's 334. Not a big difference, but we're all about the facts on this channel. Except for the time I forgot Rock Throw's accuracy. As both equations use the same variables, let's work through the Generation 3 one, just to clear up some board space. Starting with B, this is the base experience yield for the defeated Pokemon. Like base stats, this is another hidden in-game value associated with the species. So all Charmanders have the same XP yield, all Bulbasaurs have the same XP yield, which is different to Charmanders, in the first three generations, this number is between 20 and 255, depending on the species. XP yield can be translated to the value of the Pokémon, how valuable they are to defeat. So final evolutions, legendaries, and rare Pokémon like the Chansey line have high base yields, whereas common or weak Pokémon like Magikarp or the Babies have low base yields. I don't believe there's any way to see a Pokémon's base yield in-game, but Bulbapedia has them listed. Although if you don't trust Bulbapedia, you could always crack open the game's disassemblies and see each species values there. L is the level of the enemy Pokemon. A nice easy one. Defeating a level 6 Pidgey takes more effort than defeating a level 3 Pidgey, so you are rewarded with more experience points. S is related to the sharing of experience, either via switching Pokemon mid-fight or through the use of an XP share item. It's thanks to this addition that allows you to switch train your Magikarp while waiting for it to evolve. The value of S varies in different scenarios. If no XP shares are in use, the value of S is how many non-fainted Pokémon took part in the knocking out of the enemy. So if my Mewtwo knocks out the coughing on its own, it gets 171 experience. But if I was to switch train with a Magikarp, both Mewtwo and Magikarp would receive half of the XP pot. Note the value isn't quite equal to half of the amount Mewtwo got when he was going solo, and this is due to rounding, and also where the 1 over S is applied in the equation. As I'm using a Generation 2 example here, to calculate these numbers we'd need to be using the Generation 2 equation I mentioned earlier. If three non-fainted Pokémon were involved, they'd each receive a third, and so on. Things get a smidge more complicated when XP Share comes into play. In Generation 1, the XP Share was a key item called XP All that's given to the user if they've caught 50 Pokémon. As held items didn't exist in Generation 1, the XP All just sits in the bag. If you defeat an enemy with the XP All in your bag, all your party Pokémon get a split of the XP Pot, whether they participated or not. In Generation 2 onwards, it's called the XP Share, and it's now a held item. Pokémon holding the XP Share will receive a split of the XP Pot, whether they participated or not. If XP Sharing items are in play, Pokémon get their battle experience calculated twice, once for those that participated, and once for those affected by an XP Share. So if an XP share holding Pokémon contributes to a battle, they'll receive two separately calculated lots of experience. So for Pokémon that have participated, S is twice the number of Pokémon that participated and haven't fainted. So essentially we split the total XP in half. One half for participants, one half for the XP share Pokémon. For the non-participants, in Generation 1, S is equal to twice the number of non-fainted participants, multiplied by total number of Pokémon in the party. This sentence exposes two Generation 1 bugs, or Generation 1 features, who's to say. 
The fact that we multiply by total number of Pokemon in the party, instead of total non-fainted Pokemon in our party, means if you have fainted Pokemon in your team, the XP they would be getting from the XP all is lost to the Aether. So everyone will get a sixth of the share pot, even if one of the six Pokemon is unconscious and wouldn't be able to receive any. The second issue is that we multiply by the number of non-fainted participants. This means XP all Pokemon are actually receiving a portion of the split that the participants get. Visualising that, we see for one participant in a team of six with an XP all and one of our Pokemon is fainted, Pokemon 1 gets half of the experience for participating, and then each of the six, including Pokemon 1, get a sixth of the share half, although the fainted Pokemon's experience gets lost. But if we have two participants, we see the XP all Pokemon are now fighting over a sixth of a quarter, throwing that remaining quarter of potential XP in the bin. So the more participants in a fight, the less experience the XP all Pokemon will receive. For generations 2 and 3, these issues are resolved and we get some pie chance that actually makes sense. For non-participants, if they're holding the XP share, S is equal to twice the number of non-fainted Pokemon holding the XP share. So if we had a battle with two participants and one non-participant holding the XP share, we see Pokemon 1 and 2 receive a quarter of the total pot, with the XP share holding Pokemon number 3 taking the rest. And if we have one participant and three non-participants holding the XP share, we see Pokemon 1 getting 50% of the pot, with the pacifists receiving a third of the share half, or one-sixth of the total pot. I don't know about you, but generations 2 and 3 make a lot more sense than generation 1 for this one. And so the fastest way to train your Magikarp in Generation 1 would be to throw the XP all in the PC and just switch train with one other Pokemon, giving Magikarp half of the experience every battle. And for Generations 2 onwards, the fastest way would be to do the same thing as Generation 1, switch training with one other Pokemon, except also give your Magikarp the XP share to hold. That way the fish ends up with 75% of the total experience every battle. Ugh, that was a lot. Back to the original equation. We're onto the E variable now. This one's pretty simple. E stands for A. The egg in question is the lucky egg. This is a held item, so it's only relevant for generations two and three. It's found as a potential held item on wild Chansey. Chansey are already elusive buggers, and the fact that Chansey only have a two or 5% chance of holding the egg makes them very lucky indeed. If one of your participating Pokemon is holding a lucky egg, their gained experience will be multiplied by 1.5. If a Pokemon doesn't have the egg, E has a value of 1. On to A. This is set to 1 if the Pokemon you defeat is wild, and set to 1.5 if it's a trainer fight. I've got no idea what A actually stands for, but all we need to know is that if defeating a wild Rattata gives you 100 experience, defeating a trainer-owned Rattata of the same level would give you 150 experience. I guess the idea behind this one is a trainer Pokemon might have better DVs than a random wild one, or the trainer AI makes for a harder fight than the random choices a wild Pokemon would make. So defeating a trainer Pokemon deserves more of a reward. And finally, we reach the T. This is another 1.5 times modifier, for if your Pokemon gaining the experience, either via participating or XP share, is a traded Pokemon. Or more technically, if its original trainer ID is different from your current trainer ID. You'll see this bump to gained experience on screen as boosted experience. If, however, the Pokemon was caught by you in-game, T is 1. Knowing all of this, we can say that the most experience you could possibly get in Generation 3 would be a one-on-one -on -one fight with no experienced shareholders in the party against a Pokemon with the highest base experience yield at level 100, and it's a trainer battle. And you're using a traded Pokemon holding a lucky egg, giving us the maximum experience in one go of 12,291. So now for a more complicated worked example. We're in Gen 3 still fighting that same level 100 Chansey trainer battle and we have a full party of six. The first two of our Pokemon participate. The middle four are holding an XP share, the first and last ones are holding a lucky egg, and Pokemon two and five are traded. As we're in generation three, we'll be using the generation three equation and the appropriate values for S. Starting with Charmander, we have Chansey's base yield of 255 multiplied by its level 100, divided by seven, which gives us 3,642 rounded down. S for a participating Pokemon with XP shares in play is equal to twice the number of participants, which is 4. A quarter of 3,642 gives us 910. Then we're holding a lucky egg, so that's times 1.5, which is 1,365. And this is a trainer battle, so that's another times 1.5, giving Charmander 2,047 experience. 
Machamp both participated and has an XP share, so they'll be getting two XP calculations. The participation XP will be the same as for Charmander, as we might not be holding the lucky egg, but we are traded. So we've replaced the times 1.5 for the egg with the times 1.5 for being traded. So the result is identical. That's 2047 so far. For the XP share calculation, we'll have the same base and level, but S will be twice the number of non-fainted Pokemon with an XP share, which is 8, giving us 455, which again gets the trainer and the traded times 1.5 multipliers, giving us an additional 1,023 experience, meaning Machamp gets 3,070 experience in total. Dugong and Drowsy are identical as far as the calculations are concerned. They both didn't participate, they're holding XP shares, and they aren't traded. So that's base times level over 7 again, divided by 8 as S is twice the number of non-fainted XP shareholders, and a single times 1.5 as it's a trainer battle, giving Dugong and Drowsy 682 experience each. Grime is also a non-participant, but this one is traded, so we'll get 1.5 times the amount Dugong and Drowsy got, giving Grime a 1,023 experience. And finally, poor Farfetch'd as Pokemon number 6. We forgot to give him an XP share, and he didn't participate, so he gets nothing. We come to the end of this Pokemats, and I find myself finally able to answer the question that bugged me since I was old enough to read a rude magazine that I found in the woods. Why does defeating Charmander in the lab battle give you 69 experience points? Charmander is level 5 with a base yield of 65. 65 times 5 divided by 7 is 46. It's a trainer battle with a single non-traded participant and held items didn't exist, which gives us 46 times 1.5, which is 69. Nice. And it'll continue to give us 69 experience regardless of who we start our run with. Both Bulbasaur and Mewtwo will receive 69 experience points after defeating this Charmander. But what's this? Bulbasaur leveled up and Mewtwo didn't? Dun dun dun! We need to learn about growth rates and experience groups. But I've gone on for plenty long enough for this one, so that'll have to wait till the next episode. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something, because I definitely did. If there's any game mechanics you'd like me to do an episode on, then please let me know. See ya!